Okay, this is going to be uh, Critical Care Pharmacology, and this is going to be Part 1, Antihypertensives. We have two pages of terms here to go over. Uh, pharmacology, study and preparation pro of pro the properties, the uses, and the effects of drugs. Pharmacokinetics, the study of the actions of the drugs in the body. And the study of the actions pretty much boil down to this right here. How does it absorb? How is it distributed? Uh, how is it metabolized? And then how is it excreted? Pharmacodynamics, study of how drugs work on living organisms. And then agonist, uh, stimulates cellular receptor sites, produces intercellular effects. An agonist is almost synonymous for a stimulant. So whenever we say we have a sympathetic agonist, that means that I'm going to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. Agonist. Antagonist. Blocks cellular receptor sites, prevents intercellular effects. If I antagonize something, I'm going against what it's trying to do. So if I have an antagonist, um, I, if I antagonize any effect or target tissue, then it's going to block its actions. Half-life. Time that it takes the body to eliminate half of the medication from the bloodstream. So we get peak levels, and then they kind of go away. Half-life is half the time, so we're kind of on the downhill slide whenever we're looking at the half-life on the medication. We still may have therapeutic range here that we still will achieve um, even after the half-life of the medication. Bioavailability. The amount of the drug that is available for activity at the target tissue. Bioavailability means that um, whenever the drug is biotransformed or changed into its active form or the body has degenerated it in any of those scenarios there, the amount that's allowed or left for the target tissue to work with is, is the bioavailability of the drug. So if I started off with a 500 milligram capsule but by the time that it actually got to the tissues where its target was, there was only 100 milligrams of it left, then that would be the bioavailability. Drug toxicity, harmful level in the, of the drug in the blood. And then biotransformations. Most of our drugs, especially our cardiac drugs, do not come in their perfect form. Um, they need to be biotransformed or changed into their active form that, that works on the target tissues. This is generally facilitated most of the time by the liver and some oxidation systems that are, that are within the body. Cardiovascular drugs. A couple more terms. Chronotropy and inotropy. Chronotropy refers to the heart rate and inotropy refers to the contractile force strength. Now everybody probably remembers this, cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. Now, very simply, we're going to talk about this guy here for a second. And this is also what we can adjust in the body. We can adjust the heart rate. We can adjust the contractile force strength. We can adjust the peripheral vascular resistance with any of our vasopressors and most of our antihypertensives. Fluid is what these three in combination is what makes up stroke volume. That whenever we look at the amount of volume coming out of the left ventricle, that there was ample heart rate, there was ample contractile force strength, and there was ample amount of fluid in the ventricle for the ejection to be what it is. Peripheral vascular resistance keeps pressure on the heart but it can also work against the heart. If your PV, PVR, or systemic vascular resistance, increases higher than what your left ventricle can pump against, then there's a problem. You will generally go into congestive heart failure at that point. Antihypertensives. Goals on this is to decrease systemic arterial pressures, improve cardiac output, and increase in organ perfusion. Nitroprusside sodium, nitropress, or nipride. Classification, cardiovascular agent, antihypertensive agent, vasodilator, and non-nitrate. Relaxes smooth muscle, venous and arterial. Decreases preload and afterload. Preload and afterload. Let's talk about that for just a second. Preload, this is the venous side, this is the arterial side. Preload is over here.
this over here is afterload. Afterload is what the left ventricle must pump against, or the pressure that is in the arterial side. Preload is the amount that is brought into the right ventricle so that it can go into the pulmonary trunk. So by relaxing both the venous and the arterial side, or increasing the lumen on both of these, I can reduce the afterload and reduce the preload. Overall, this is going to decrease blood pressure and cardiac output. <clears throat> Indications for nitropress, nitropress or nipride, nitropresside, are going to be hypertensive emergency, hypertensive encephalopathy. Contraindications on this are going to be hypotension. Obviously, if they have a low blood pressure, we're not going to want to use this. Lactation or known hypersensitivity. Side effects of nipride. Hypotension, flushing, nausea, vomiting, thionocyanate poisoning. Let's talk about this here for just a second. Whenever your body metabolizes nipride, it turns into thiono, thiocyanate, which is essentially a preform of cyanide poisoning. If we aren't careful and we have used this on long term, um, we use this long term, this will actually give our patient cyanide poisoning. Blurred vision is also a consideration, tinnitus, altered mental status, and seizures. Dosing for nipride, 0 0.5 to 10 mics per kilogram per minute. And we'll talk about this once. We'll talk about this formula again. We should uh, plug this probably into a calculator. Let's say that we started our patient off at 1. How we would set it up on a calculator would be dose times the patient's weight in kilograms times the drip factor which we should always use 60 when using a pump and we should divide that by the concentration strength of the substance so normal nipride is 200 mics per mil dose let's say that we wanted to start them off at one on 100 kilogram patient one times 100 times 60 divided by 200 let me plug that into my calculator here really quick I'll come up with the answer should be times thirty drops per minute or thirty mils per hour. These numbers are the same drops per minute and mils per hour when using a sixty drop set. Special considerations for nipride. Monitor the blood pressure and cardiac rhythms very closely. Uh, start low and titrate to effect. Caution in patients with renal dysfunction, they won't be able to eliminate it. Hepatic dysfunction, they won't be able to biotransform it. Uh, administer in light resistant container. <clears throat> a light resistant container, most of the time the nipride drips will come with a brown paper or brown plastic bag over them. They are light sensitive. The drug metabolizes into thiocyanate. Infusions greater than 72 hours increase your possibility of cyanide or thiocyanate poisoning. Nitroglycerin IV or nitrostat. Classification on this is going to be a cardiovascular agent, vasodilator, and nitrate. Actions. Smooth muscle relaxant. Vascular and coronary smooth muscle. Decreases systolic and diastolic blood pressures. Decreases cardiac workload and improves coronary artery perfusion. Indications for this are going to be ischemic chest pain, acute myocardial infarction, and hypertension. Contraindications, obviously, since it's going to reduce the blood pressure, hypotension is one of those, or known hypersensitivity. <clears throat> Side effects, hypotension, headache, cardiac palpitations, reflex tachycardia, flushing, methemoglobin anemia. Now, the way that it is metabolized in the body it will increase the amount of methemoglobin anemia that you actually have. And methemoglobin is a form of hemoglobin that cannot carry oxygen. So if we have higher doses than, say, upwards of 50 or 75, we can expect to have more methemoglobin or methemoglobin. Um, 
So just be aware of that. This is this form of hemoglobin you cannot carry oxygen with, so it makes it kind of counterproductive. It's like shooting yourself in the foot sometimes. Dose on this is going to be 5 to 50 mics per minute infusion. Mics per minute, how we figure that really quick. Dose times drip factor divided by concentration strength. Uh, special considerations, monitor closely for hypotension. <clears throat> Classification, uh, new drug, Nestridide or Natricor. Natricor is a lot easier to, to say. Uh, classifications, cardiovascular agent. It is essentially a synthetic version of atrial nitritic peptide. Now, whenever we're looking at ANP or atrial nitritic peptide, it is your negative feedback system for your angiotensin II, um, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. What this is, is this causes vasodilation. Now, why that works is, is because angiotensin II causes vasoconstriction. So at the point that you have enough blood pressure, and this is a more of a long-term effect for increasing blood pressure, AMP would say, okay, we have enough blood pressure, let's not pop anything, so I'm going to secrete some atrial peptide. Uh, actions on this is going to relax vascular smooth muscle, decreasing preload and afterload. <clears throat> indications, congestive heart failure. Contraindications, this should actually be over here, would be hypotension, valvular stenosis, restrictive or obstructive cardiomyopathies, and cardiac tamponade. Side effects of NatureCore, hypotension, cardiac dysrhythmias, angina, headache, and palpitations. Dose on this is going to be 2 mics per kilogram IV push over 60 seconds, and then we need to hang a maintenance infusion of 0 0.01 mics per kilogram per minute. <clears throat> Special considerations, monitor the blood pressure and cardiac rhythm very closely, caution in pregnancies, lactating patients. Uh, be sure and give it a dedicated line and do not administer any other IV meds through the same line. So we want to keep this guy by himself. <clears throat> Hydrolazine, hydrochloride, or presaline. Classification, cardiovascular agent, vasodilator, non-nitrate, antihypertensive agent. Actions, direct arterial vasodilation, and kind of works by an unknown mechanism. Decreases systolic and diastolic blood pressures. Indication is a hypertensive emergency, preeclampsia, which is a first-line agent for, uh, for both of those, uh, congestive heart failure, and unexplained pulmonary hypertension. So if your pulmonary artery becomes hypertensive or you have a lot of back pressure or going to right heart failure, this might be a drug <clears throat> that they could actually use to decrease some of that. Contraindications, coronary artery disease, mitral valve disease, hypotension, acute myocardial infarction, known hypersensitivity, and persistent tachycardia. <clears throat> Side effects, hypotension, dizziness, headache, tachycardia, angina pectoris, nausea and vomiting, and you can also get a decreased hemocrit and hemoglobin with this actual, uh, with this actual drug as well. Dose on this drug is going to be 5 to 40 milligrams IV push over 1 to 2 minutes. Special considerations, <clears throat> monitor blood pressure and cardiac rhythm very closely. Caution when administering with beta blockers, and this goes back to our triangle again. Peripheral vascular resistance, contractile force strength, heart rate. Very simply, if, it, if you're giving somebody beta blockers, which is adjusting heart rate and contractile force strength, and all of a sudden you start adjusting peripheral vascular resistance, you can get more hypotension than you were first seeing, or first wanting, or, or actually wanting at all. Um, hypotension is also a special consideration. Uh, nicardipine hydrochloride, or cardine. Uh, classification for this is going to be cardiovascular agent, calcium channel blocker, antihypertensive agent. Uh, actions, it decreases myocardial contractility, dilates vascular smooth muscle, and decreases systemic vascular resistance. Indications, uh, hypertensive emergency, angina pectoris. Contraindications, known hypersensitivity, lactation, and advanced aortic stenosis. Side effects on this are going to be hypotension, palpitations, tachycardia, and CNS disturbances. 
dose for cardine. Adults going to be 5 milligrams per hour. We can increase this by about 2.5 milligrams per hour every 15 minutes if we need to. Maximum dose though must be capped at 15 milligrams an hour. Um, pediatric, 1 to 3 mics per kilogram per minute. Uh, children, and this is in children 9 days to 10 years old. Anybody over 10 years old is going to be considered an adult. Special considerations can be used alone or with beta blockers to treat stable angina, can be used alone or with other antihypertensive agents to treat hypertension. Monitor patient closely, especially those taking multiple vasoactive drugs. And again, <clears throat> this goes back to our blood pressure triangle. Use with caution and congestive heart failure patients, hepatic dysfunction, and pregnancy. Phenoldepam, mesylate, or chloropam. <clears throat> uh, classification, cardiovascular agent, vasodilator, non-nitrate, antihypertensive agent, uh, dopamine agonist. Actions, acts as dopamine receptor agonist, and it only, it only stimulates certain ones. Decreases peripheral vascular resistance, decreases systolic and diastolic blood pressures, and increases renal blood flow. And this is the one that it works on. By providing a little bit of dopaminergic response, um, it increases renal artery blood flow, which is what we get from a 2 to 5 mic loading dose of dopamine. So this will actually increase our glomerular filtration rate and help our kidneys if we, if we needed to do so. Indications, severe hypertension. Contraindications, known hypersensitivity and we do not use it with beta blockers. Side effects, headache, nervousness, vertigo, hypotension, tachycardia, T-wave inversion, we can actually create a little bit of ischemia with this, flushing, palpitations, dysrhythmias, acute myocardial infarction, heart failure, increased creatine, BUN, and glucose levels. And that would be because of the stimulation to the actual kidney. Uh, dose 0 0.025 to 0 0.3 mics per kilogram per minute infusion may be increased by 0 0.05 to, to 0 0.1 mic per kilogram per minute every 15 minutes. Special considerations, use cautiously in patients with asthma, hepatic cirrhosis, portal hypertension, or variceal, variceal bleeding or um, esophageal varices. Uh, monitor blood pressure and cardiac rhythms very closely. Central acting antihypertensives. Clonidine or catapress. Classification on this is going to be a cardiovascular agent, CNS agent, and analgesic. Um, action stimulates the CNS, alpha adrenergic receptors, inhibits sympathetic vasomotor centers, decreases nerve impulses, reduces systolic and diastolic blood pressures, can produce bradycardia, inhibits renin release from the kidneys. Indication, hypertension, especially useful if you have no IV access. This isn't, you can give them an oral pill. Ethanol and opiate withdrawal syndrome. Contraindications, hypotension, altered mental status, known hypersensitivity. Side effects is going to be hypotension, bradycardia, tachycardia, angioedema can actually also occur. Weakness and somnolence. Somnolence is pretty much a near sleep state. Um, dose on this is going to be 0.1 to 0.2 oral or sublingual. Uh, pediatrics, 5 to 10 mics per kilogram per day, divided over 8 to 12 hours. Special considerations on this. Uh, monitor their blood pressure and cardiac rhythm very closely. <clears throat> ACE inhibitors. Anelopril or Vasotec. Uh, classification on this is going to be cardiovascular agent, ACE inhibitor, antihypertensive agent. <clears throat> Actions inhibit the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a vasoconstrictor. So by inhibiting angiotensin 1 from converging, converting into angiotensin 2, and this is done through ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme, this will result in vasodilation, lowers preload and afterload. Indications, mild to moderate hypertension, congestive heart failure, 
and acute myocardial infarction. <clears throat> this is one of the medicines that they actually use. Lisinopril is what they mostly use, uh, allow people to, to take home. And it decreases sudden cardiac death by reducing cardiac workload. Um, this here would be the IV form of it. <clears throat> Contraindications, obviously hypotension, cardiogenic shock, or a known hypersensitivity. Side effects, hypotension, tachycardia and palpitations, angioedema. Uh, ACE inhibitors have a bad habit about creating angioedema as far as an allergic response. Uh, renal dysfunction and then hyperkalemia can also be caused. Dose for an adult, 1.25 milligrams, slow IV push over five minutes. And this can be repeated every six hours. In the pediatric, five to 10 mics per kilogram IV every eight hours. <clears throat> Special considerations. Use cautiously in patients with renal dysfunction, renal artery stenosis, renal replacement therapy. Uh, renal replacement therapy is going to pretty much be <clears throat> um, to where their kidneys are dysfunctional and uh, they're, they're in essentially renal failure. Uh, dialysis, another one. Uh, monitor blood pressure and cardiac rhythm very closely. And then hyperkalemia. Beta blockers. Classification. Parasympathomimetic or sympatholytic. Now those are, most of them will be underneath the classification of a beta blocker. Action on this blocks beta adrenergic receptors, inhibits the effects of circulating catecholamines, <clears throat> imparts negative myocardial effects, dromotropic, chronotropic, and inotropic. Dromotropic pretty much means the conduction speed, the rate, and the contractile force strength. Indications, hypertensive emergency, a dysrhythmia you can also use this for. And the dysrhythmias that we're talking about here are kind of SVT, PSVT. <clears throat> also good for acute myocardial infarctions uh, whenever you're trying to decrease contractile force strength and reduce workload. Contraindications, cardiac failure. If there's any type of heart failure, this probably isn't going to be the drug of choice. You need everything out of the muscle to begin with whenever they're in heart failure. Um, hypotension, AV heart block greater than a first degree. If they were in a second degree heart block, you probably would not want to put on board a beta blocker. Um, sinus bradycardia, moderate to severe congestive heart failure. <clears throat> Side effects, hypotension, bradycardia, development of an actual heart block, bronchiospasm, because this can also block the beta 2, headache, dizziness, confusion, nausea, and vomiting. Dose on this is going to be 500 mics per kilogram per minute for one minute, maintenance fusion after that of 50 mics per kilogram per minute, you can increase every five to 10 minutes to a maximum of 300 mics per kilogram per minute. <clears throat> Special considerations, please use cautiously in patients with asthma, emphysema, congestive heart failure, or renal dysfunction. Monitor their vital signs and cardiac rhythms closely. Discontinue infusion immediately if a heart block, bradycardia, or hypotension develops. Lobetalol, hydrochloride, norbidine, or trandate. Classifications on this is a parasympathomimetic, non-selective, beta adrenergic antagonist. So this is a non-selective beta blocker. It will block both beta 1 and beta 2. <coughs> Antihypertensive agent. Action. Slows sinoatrial node discharge, atrial ventricular node conduction, decreases ventricular inotropy, diminishes peripheral vascular resistance, affords longer half-life duration of action compared to esmolol. Indications, hypertensive emergencies, especially those with increased intracranial pressure, cerebrovascular accident, intracranial hemorrhage, or traumatic brain injury. Contraindications, bronchial asthma, bradycardia, hypotension, heart failure, or heart block. Side effects on this are going to be bradycardia, hypotension, cardiac dysrhythmia, <clears throat> dizziness, fatigue, nausea, vomiting. We could even put the patient into congestive heart failure. Dose, 20 milligrams IV push slowly over two minutes. Repeat 40 to 80 milligram IV push every 10 minutes until desired effect. 
Maximum dose is going to be 300 milligrams. Maintenance fusion of 2 milligrams per minute and titrate to effect. Special considerations, monitor blood pressure and cardiac rhythm closely. Use cautiously in those with COPD. That's because they're going to need that beta 2 receptor to bronchial dilate them. This ends part one. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Name's Roy Smith. Roy.smith at redlandcc.edu or smithr.nimsa.net. Thank you.